What's going on YouTube? Geosnow right here. So in today's video we're discussing about whether it's possible to run Android on an iPhone 10, iPhone 8, iPhone 7 Plus and so on with the new Checkmate exploit. Because this has been a very common question lately, especially since Android on iPhone has been done in the past. And if you search on YouTube you can find two of my videos from one year ago where I teach you how to actually install it on an older device. For example an iPod Touch first generation or an iPhone 2G or of course an iPhone 3G. These were supported through a project called iTroid. Now there's a lot of information about this online and the reason it wasn't maintained is because this requires a bootroom exploit so that we were able to change the normal iOS bootloader which is iBoot with another one called Open iBoot which would allow us to run Android. And then of course that made it possible to run Android on older devices but now with the new exploit by Xeon X which is basically a bootroom exploit for the A11 all the way down to the A5 devices so that would be the iPhone 4s all the way up to the iPhone 10. the question arises can we actually run Android nowadays on these devices? Well, yes, it turns out that we can, and even though it's a lot of work, it's actually possible. Morpheus, in one of his posts, said that with this exploit we would be able to boot another iOS version, but also we would be able to boot any OS we want, for example Android. So even though the iDroid project is no longer maintained, finally we have a new bootroom exploit, so the Linux on the iPhone is actually a new thing again. So we can basically run Android, Linux, or even Windows for ARM on this new devices for example the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8, the iPhone 6 and so on because now we can control the bootloader and of course we can recreate the open iBoot in here so that we can load Android or any other operating system we think of. And with this exploit even though it would be tethered it would still definitely be very very good but why exactly did I say it would be hard to do? Well if you think about it the Android is completely open source so we can compile it for ARM and of course we can do any modifications we want to the kernel so that we can adjust it to work for the iPhone. However, there is a problem. Android has drivers and of course all these drivers are required in order to control the components. Now the components are controlled at lower levels. You see Apple's components, especially the chips, are actually Apple's own. They are not actually using components that are available on other devices. For example, you would never find the A11 chip on any Android phone. It's just not available. It's something that Apple creates for their devices. So if you were to port Android, we need a way to basically be able to interface the components and of course we would need to create drivers for Apple's proprietary hardware which isn't exactly very easy to do. It's not impossible, it's definitely doable and it has been done in the past with the iDroid project but it's not easy. And of course nowadays Apple uses even more proprietary components than they did a couple years ago for example back on the iPhone 2G so now it's even harder but it's definitely possible and this exploit does open a lot of doors for dual booting and for booting different operating systems other than the iOS. So yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated. I am Geo Snow. Till the next time, peace out.